So imagine a patient who's in shock. Let's just walk through this normal process that happens. This is how you want to think about it in the sense of physics, because once you understand it, you understand it well. So if somebody is hypotensive, you're going to get sympathetic stimulation. And the sympathetic stimulation is going to do what? It's going to cause increased contractility of your heart. If you increase contractility of your heart, would you increase cardiac output? Say if somebody is in shock, you're like, okay, blood pressure is low. So I'm going to get my beta receptors to fire. Beta receptors are going to fire sympathetic. Sympathetic is going to stimulate your heart, stimulate your beta 1. So you're going to get an increased heart rate, increased inotropy, cardiac output should go up. Cardiac output goes up. What happens to systolic blood pressure? Goes up. It has to go up. Great. At the same time, the same sympathetic is also going to go stimulate your RAS system because you have decreased blood flow. And even having less blood flow to the kidney is going to stimulate your RAS system. If you activate your RAS system, aldosterone is going to reabsorb sodium and water. So you're going to increase preload and again bring more volume in, which is again going to contribute to an increased systolic blood pressure. And then what's going to happen to your diastolic blood pressure? Because you're going to have resistance and it's going to increase. But imagine if a patient had septic shock. 